here, it's Pippa again. I'm back to do more SPSS with you. Bet you can't wait. No, yep, didn't think you could. So exciting. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go with you uh, how to do tables and also to do some basic descriptives. So like descriptive statistics, mean, medium mode, etc., etc. Sounds boring, but they're the kind of thing that you really need to know about. And once you know it, you'll know it hopefully forever, or you can just watch this video again. Anyway, so first things first, um, exactly the same as the video I did on graphs and the video I did on entering data. I've got the same kind of setup, so I've got, uh, we're going to do repeated measures, which are these, and independent measures over here. So for those of you who haven't watched those videos, basic rundown, basically I've got a study, we have 10 participants in, and they did a reaction time task either with caffeine or without caffeine. In my independent design, they did it either or, so caffeine, no caffeine. Um, repeated measures, all the participants did both conditions, so you'd be comparing their scores across both conditions. In this one, you're comparing between conditions, so um, yeah, independent between subjects, repeated measures here. Um, yeah, so let's make some tables. Once again, repeated measures is harder than independent measures. So first of all, we're going to go analyze, tables, custom tables. Just click OK. You can, you can click don't show this again, and then it will stop being annoying all the time. OK, so it's really simple, kind of like graphs. So if you haven't watched a graphs video, then this won't be the same. But if you have, then it is. Um, either way, so you've got your, oh, sorry, Windows 8 is such a pain in the ass. Columns, rows, so um, we're gonna look at, first of all, we'll do independent measures. So in your rows, well, it's kind of up to you which way you want it, but I'm gonna do it. So you're gonna have the condition here, so you can see caffeine, no caffeine, and then the count is gonna come up here, and we're gonna do reaction time. So pull this across here. So this is gonna come up with your mean. So uh, this is going to tell you the mean overall reaction time for caffeine, the mean overall reaction time for no caffeine. You can change what you want to go in here by clicking summary statistics. You can also put the maximum across if you wanted, the median, basically anything you want really. If you have a statistic that you desire to put in, go for it, shove it in. Sounds a bit wrong. Um, apply. So yeah, then we've got reaction time, the mean, the maximum, and the median. So mean, let's just quickly go through it. Mean is your average, so when you add them all together, divide by the overall number, that also gives you the average. That's kind of quite a standard statistic. Um, most of your inferential statistics are gonna use means and things. Median, put them all in a row, ascending order, and then choose the middle one. You've also got mode that's used a lot, which is the most common value. Uh, range is smallest, minus, biggest. So the range of the data. So yeah, that's kind of how you um, pretty much do it. I'm just having a little look through here. Yep, this is all stuff that unless you're, I don't know, doing a PhD or something, which you're probably not if you're watching this, but if you are, the name of you use this? I don't know. Anyway, sorry guys, I'm waffling, bear with me. Um, that's kind of, yeah, okay, click OK. So in here, you can open up, that's not what normally comes up. Okay, so you double click on this, and you can kind of change the things here. If this had loads of decimal points, clicking on it like this would bring up a massive number. You probably don't want to change the numbers in there, that's kind of probably fraudulent data playing with, like, these are the actual numbers. To, but you can change the names here if you wanted to, like, I don't know why you'd want to, but as you can see, it's come up with a label rather than things. So I'm waffling. Um, if we go back to our data, right? Uh, where's it gone? Analyze tables, custom table. Okay, so you can also add um, add things by dragging them into places. So you might want to add participant number here. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you can. So this doesn't really make sense in the data set, but so you can put different categories here as well and then it will come across split things down further or you could drag it, pull it across here, so your participant number, so you've got the mean, medium, maximum for that category and then for this category and it's still the reaction time. So that's just to let you know that you can do that if you want. Um, in the output as well, if you read... Um, 
table looks okay so if you're doing um, sort of psychology or anything like that normally you'd want it in academic so it would come out you haven't got all the different lines all over the place it just gives you a few lines like this so that's ones are really kind of if you want to make them look a bit nicer in most journals and things if you're getting it published or anything like that they want you to kind of have it instead of having lines absolutely everywhere they just like these little lines and things but that's really easy it's just called academic and you can click that and it'll change the look of your table okay then so for our reaction times for our repeated measures design we can't I'll show you we can't just put them in across like this oh, these are the ones that were here earlier blue peter style okay okay Hang in there guys, I know this is probably quite boring, but you do really need to know this. So, um, these are your two independent version. these are your two independent variables. Put this here and it will tell you the mean, medium, maximum of caffeine. So you want no caffeine underneath. So then you can just drag and drop it under there and it will tell you them here. And then the columns, you don't need to drag anything up there, it will just come up along here. So you don't need anything in the columns, it will just put your statistics in there already. And then if for example you want a participant number you could do it like that and drag it along there so in repeated measures just drag them all your scale data you pull them underneath each other and you can pull these drag these round and they're like I don't know where that's gone now yep that was helpful so there you go click OK so you've got the mean medium maximum of caffeine no caffeine median nice and simple okay I'll show you how to run a few little descriptive statistics so if we go to analyse descriptive statistics, frequencies is just going to show us, so let's have uh, so you can do mean, median, mode, or you can also do skewness, kurtosis, variance, standard deviation, range, everything's there. And click OK and it's going to show you all these different things for all of them. And you can also do that by going into Analyze Descriptive Statistics Descriptives. Same, similar options there, really. I'm not entirely sure why they have two tabs for that. They pretty much do the same thing. If we have a look at our outputs, it's just slightly, it's what it puts in one table rather than separate tables. So I suppose it's easier to compare a little bit that way. But the data and the sort of values that will come out are all exactly the same. Um, and that's pretty much it.